Hi, Sydney. Hi, Professor God. So, how are you? Oh, you know, I can't hear you. Huh. Hi, uh, is this better? Shoot. But there's something wrong with my Zoom, which is not good. Um, why not? Um, yeah, I can't hear anyone, so I'm going to go out and come back in. I'm trying to see, am I the host? Okay, Danielle's a co-host. Okay, Danielle, I'm going to, I can't hear anything, so I'm going to go out and come back. Okay. Can everyone hear me? Okay. Hey, Sid. Hey, Danielle, how are you? How's your son? It's <laughs> four. Okay, say something. Hi, Cynthia, how are you? Okay, now I can hear it, thank you. I can't hear. Oops, sorry, we'll just take another minute or two as some people are coming in. And Wilson, I know you have to leave a little early. Is there any of the other spare fellows who have like a time restriction or? Okay, well, people can chat me if you do, but. So we'll just give it another minute or two um, as some more people come, or what do you think, Danielle? Can we give it one more minute? Because it's 501, we can 502.
Cindy, it doesn't look like anyone else is coming in, so maybe we should start. Okay, great. Um, so, hi, thank you guys, everyone, for coming. I know it's like a really busy, really, just a really busy fall for everyone, and that people are also sick of Zoom. So, we really appreciate um, your interest. I'm Professor Cynthia Godso, and I'm the director of the SPARE program. I just wanted to apologize for my backdrop. First of all, I had to put it up because my office is really messy, and then my colleagues were critiquing me because it's not the Brooklyn Bridge. Uh, I don't know how to get the Brooklyn Bridge. So if anyone does know, you can send it to me. But um, anyway, I wanted to just very briefly um, uh, talk for a minute or two about the SPARE program um, and then turn it over to Danielle Sorkin for like a brief minute, who's the director of the Center for Public Interest or the Public Interest Center. And then most importantly, the SPARE fellows from last summer, a group of them are here to tell you about their internship. So the SPARE Fellowship Program is going into its 40-something year. So there's a hundreds or I guess more, probably over a thousand um, amazing alums um, that have worked in all different areas of public interest. Um, just to be really clear, for this fellowship, as opposed to the Lisby Fellowship, that does not include government service mostly. So basically, it's usually not including, um, you know, prosecution or other kinds of government service. There's some small exceptions, but I just wanted to make that clear for people. But other than that, a huge range, as you'll hear from the fellows themselves, working with low-income people or people in the criminal or immigration systems, environmental justice, et cetera. Um, and the program is one um, summer of stipend, uh, a stipend for public interest work one summer, but also much more than that in terms of, you know, a community with speakers and, and lunches, and then, like I said, alumni and annual symposium of people interested in public interest or social justice work. The application should be online, um, so people can also email myself, Danielle, or Marva Skeen, that you've, who you've received emails from, if you are having, uh, if you have questions about it or want to know. It's fairly straightforward, um, and I would just emphasize that people have come in at different points. So some people come in um, when they're applying to law school, um, and then other people apply the fall of their first year. And then they would do their spare summer with the stipend the summer after their first year. Other people apply at the fall of their second year um, and then do that summer. Some are even um, part-time students would do even maybe like their third summer. Um, sometimes people apply more than once and we definitely value that, like meaning that um, we know you're really interested. Um, so anyway, just it is definitely a competitive program, but um, a lot of great people. And if you, like I said, if you have any questions, but the application process, and there'll also be uh, certainly for first years more than uh, one chance as well. Um, I want to turn it over, well, yeah, to Danielle and then to the fellows, and then we'll have some time um, for questions as well. Although you can also always email me um, or Danielle or um, Marva, as I said, with more specific questions. Thank you, Professor Godso. Hi, everyone. My name is Danielle Sorkin. I'm the Executive Director of the Public Service Law Center. Um, really excited that you all took the time to come to this program. Um, I did want to let you know that our office, the Public Service Law Center, is available to assist you with your applications. So if you would like help with your essay, um, with your resume for the, for the fellowship, you can definitely make an appointment. Um, you can email publicservice at brooklaw.edu. I'll put that in the chat. Happy to meet with you guys and work with you on the application. Um, if you also leave this program, and want to ask a question in person, um, my office will be in the student lounge tomorrow afternoon to answer any questions that you might have. And I'm also hosting an evening Zoom for an hour tomorrow night from six to seven to answer just any questions. So we just really wanna be available to you. Um, so now we're gonna turn it over to the fellows. Great, yeah, so I think we'll just go in alphabetical order, although I know Ariana won't be here. I hope that's okay. Again, if someone's at the end, but they're each going to like briefly describe their uh, placement this summer and, um, you know, what they liked about it, what kind of area of law, what they did. Um, and the first is going to be, um, would be Mercy Aleman, if she's here. Oh, there she is. Okay. Thanks, Mercy. Hi, everyone. Um, it's really nice to see everyone. Um, so this summer I was at Safe Passage Project. So I was working um, in immigration and mostly working with um, children who were facing deportation. Um, it was a very interesting experience because I, even though, you know, you think working with children, it wasn't necessarily just children. Um, I worked with people who were in all sorts of places in their immigration journey. So um, I worked, I think the range was like the youngest person I worked with was six years old. 
And then the oldest person was like 25. So that just goes to show um, how there is you, you like if you work at Safe Passage, you won't just be working with uh, young children, but you may also be working with adults who are um, kind of working towards uh, adjusting their status. So um, yeah, it was a really rewarding experience and I highly recommend it if you have um, second language skills. Um, it's also very, like, it was a really good experience. Um, I mostly worked in asylum cases and special immigrant juvenile status cases. And um, I got to do uh, research, I got to do writing and overall, it was a really um, awesome experience. So if you have any questions about immigration or safe passage, definitely let me know. Thank you. Great, thanks so much. And there's also a list, I think, is it posted online of the list of the, of the people and their different um, placements? Do you know, Danielle? Or could, it is, okay, someone said it was. Okay, great. So we can also look at that. Uh, you can also look at that if you forget. Um, so we're now Wilson Bear. Um, hello, uh, my name is Wilson Bear, and uh, this past summer I interned uh, with the Legal Aid Society and their juvenile rights practice. Um, I was in education for several years before law school, and so my reason for coming to law school was to be a lawyer for children, and I got to do that work this summer. Uh, with the juvenile rights practice, I worked with attorneys both who represented children in delinquency matters, but also in welfare, abuse, neglect matters. Delinquency work looks similar to general public defender work, except it is children, whereas uh, in welfare, uh, the way that abuse neglect proceedings work is that it is formally the state versus the parents, uh, with the children being seen as perhaps improperly or improperly, seeing the children as just property. Um, but because of that, the children get legal representation to represent uh, their desires. And so. I appeared in court on the record, I got to interview clients, I uh, drafted motions, did research, uh, but really worked to assist the attorneys. It really, you know, was hands-on substantive work throughout that I really thoroughly enjoyed. Um, again, it was the work coming into law school that I wanted to do, and I was really happy uh, that I got to do it and really satisfied uh, coming out of it, that it was a nice affirmation of, hey, this is the work that I want to do. Um, and beyond that, it's been lovely to be part of the SPARE uh, community, uh, especially last year being remote. You know, it was hard, I don't know, to, to interact with people in person. And so it was nice to have this additional community that I'm sure even in a regular year where more things are in person, uh, you're able to engage with that community. Um, and even if it's people who are interested in other areas of public interest, you know, it's so easy to become silent in your own area and the things that you are interested in, but when you can kind of interact with these people who are passionate to the same degree about their own areas of the public sector, uh, it really heightens your own understanding of the internship and being part of the community as well has been wonderful. Uh, thanks, Wilson. Um, Octavia? Is she... I don't know if she's here. Um, okay, so let's um, go to Emily Ingraham. Hello, uh, I'm Emily, I'm a 3L. I've been a sparer since last year. And this summer I worked at Campbell Legal Services in their housing unit. Um, I worked with low income tenants facing eviction in housing court. Um, it was a really great program. They did, they gave us a two week training that was the same that they give to incoming attorneys. So it was really thorough. And um, I got to work on a huge variety of cases. Um, for, <laughs> I was going to say rent control and rent stabilization, but that might not be a fun difference for you if you're not into housing. Um, and um, got to uh, argue things in court and argue with landlord attorneys and negotiate with them and work directly with clients and also do some research and writing. So um, it was really good, well-rounded experience. And uh, yeah, it was great. And then being part of SPAR is great too, getting to talk to the other students, as Wilson said, and also get to meet some other professors who I hadn't had classes with which helped me decide what I wanted to take 
uh, this semester. So that was also a really great part of the program. Thank you. Um, Juliana Lopez. Sorry, I should be checking the participant list just to make sure, but. Hi everyone, um, I'm Julie. Oh, there she is, Julie, sorry. sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I'm a 2L um, and I worked at Make the Road New York last summer. Um, so they're, um, they're, they started as an organizing group, but they grew into having a legal department. And so um, they focused on immigration, workplace justice and housing. And so I was specifically on their immigration team. Um, and I worked on mostly asylum cases and U visa cases. U visas are for victims um, of crimes. And so I had a lot of client contact, um, which I was really happy and looking forward to do this summer. Um, even though we were mostly remote, um, I was able to have um, some contact with clients in person and like set up meetings. Um, since Make the Road is also really or um, community organizing focused, um, I was also able to do a lot of like actions and meet other um, organizers in person, which is something me personally, I, I really wanted to get out of an internship as well. Um, and I also am interested in post order removal on um, cases specifically and after expressing interest in that um, I was able to work on those cases as well, so I think in general they were really open and flexible into what you wanted to you know get out of the internship, um, which I appreciated. Um, just in general, like the make the road team is is um, just very friendly and like everyone was really willing to, to help and if you had any questions like everyone was there. Um, in general, also just like supervision was really good. I think they had a, a really good um, internship training program. Um, so instead of everything being like front loaded, it was kind of spread across um, the, the 10 weeks of the internship. Um, and I, yeah, I just really enjoyed my time there and I would consider it uh, for, uh, for placement after, after law school. Um, and yeah, I think every, what everyone was just saying about spare, having that sense of community, community and um, the mentorship from um, like professors and even the public uh, service center um, has been super helpful. Um, yeah. Um, thanks, uh, uh, Rachel Mark. Hi, my name is Rachel. I'm a 3L. This past summer, I interned at the Legal Wellness Institute at the Family Center. They provide legal services to people who are living with AIDS, cancer, and other life-threatening illnesses. Um, they practice in a variety of areas, housing law, public benefits, family law, and lifetime planning. So one of the things that appealed to me was the idea to touch on a few different areas of law. Um, there's a steep learning curve, but um, it's a lot of training and support. It was a small group of attorneys and supervisors. So what was cool is that the interns were included in meetings um, and we were frequently asked the kind of work that we wanted to be doing. Um, I worked on a variety of tasks. I did client intakes and referrals. Um, I got to sit in on court appearances and client meetings. There was a lot of um, legal research as well as drafting. Um, Overall, it was a really positive experience. So if anyone's interested in working there, I'm happy to talk about it. Sorry. Great, thank you. Um, Paige? Hi, everyone, I'm Paige. Um, this past summer, oh, sorry, I'm a tool. This past summer, I worked at the Louisiana Capital Assistance Center, which is a nonprofit public, uh, public defender's office doing capital work. So. My clients um, were on the tri trial level facing um, the death penalty. I specifically worked with people who have schizophrenia or severe mental illnesses since I had a background in psychology. Um, and I got to watch plea negotiations, um, look through how offices handled media. We did um, some research on how race and economic status impacted how prosecutors prosecuted death penalty cases. Um, and yeah, it was a really cool experience even though it was remote. I echo what everyone else has said about the SPARE program. I felt really lucky to be a part of it, especially my 1L year being remote. Um, makes the community and like Brooklyn in general just feel really small and helps you reach out to professors that have the same values as you, which is really nice, um, yeah. If you need anything, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, thanks so much. I just want to highlight that even though um, a lot of people do have New York placements, like 
definitely like pages placement, even, you know, when it is, when it's not remote that people do get funded to um, go to other states and even occasionally international, but um, that definitely there's, um, there is um, the option to do that in person as well. Well, if in person is allowed, obviously. Um, okay, great, Sid. Hi everyone, I'm Sid, I'm a 3L. Um, I've been a SPAR since my 1L year and I did my, this past summer was my SPAR fellowship summer at Columbia's Climate Change Center, Sabin Center for Climate Change Law. So basically it's a research and academia center and um, I've always been interested in environmental law and environmental health. And going into that interview process, they asked me what area of law I wanted to focus in. And I said, environmental justice within environmental law. So all summer I was researching and writing, looking at different policies relating to environmental justice. We had some clients that we were consulting with to look into some of their programs to see how, what they wanted to implement or what they wanted to um, lobby and petition, how that would impact EJ communities, specifically in New York City. And we helped submit comments to the Federal Energy Regula Regulatory Commission. Um, and so I got to write the entire environmental justice section on that. So I really enjoyed my time there. It was remote. Um, on that note, I also want to plug to other environmental justice nonprofits that are in New York, NILPI, um, New York Lawyers for the Public Interest. They have an EJ department and also we act in Harlem. Their lawyer is actually based in DC. So if anyone's from there and interested in environmental law and wants to maybe go back there for a summer, I highly recommend that organization is phenomenal. Um, and I just thought it was so great. And I was so appreciative to be able to be part of the SPAR community the last two years. And I'm thankful that we're now back in person and get to finally meet everybody that I didn't know last year. So thank you. Yeah, and I just wanted to highlight based on what Sid said that like these guys, they're talking about their placement, but they also are like a huge um, wealth of knowledge about other organizations uh, in whatever area, you know, they're interested in like environmental justice. So definitely please uh, reach out to them as well as to us uh, because they know a lot. Uh, Justine Woods. Everyone. So last summer I worked at Disability Rights New York and I was specifically in their protection advocacy for people with intellectual and uh, developmental disabilities program. They do have other programs that are involved with mental health, traumatic brain injuries, uh, people who are elderly and um, anything that really could affect someone who has a disability. I did anything from client advocacy to research to more some less legal oriented work that was more like legal translation. So basically rewriting um, policies so that they would be something that could be read by people who were not well-versed in legalese. So they really do um, any type of advocacy work that could be something that would impact someone who's in the disability community. And I think the people there are really wonderful. And if anyone is interested in disability rights, I would highly recommend um, reaching out to someone there or reaching out to me and look into the work that they do. Great, thanks. Um, I think Octavia is here now. Sorry, uh, I know there's been some email issues, but are you, yeah, hi. Hi, I'm sorry. Um, so yeah, so my name, no is worries. <laughs> uh, my name is Octavia. I worked at Brooklyn Defender Services in their criminal defense practice. And I chose to work there because just their general model, I think that they treat their clients as if they're people. Um, they look at the person as a whole and they really, I felt, I felt like they have a very holistic way of um, how they advocate for their client. Um, because just because they have a criminal case, there's a lot of other things that might play, um, may, I may come into play. And so like they have a criminal case, but that might affect like whether or not they can see their children, um, things like that. And they actually not only just say, not only is that in their model, they also practice it. So um, there's, I went through, I sat through various trainings this summer where you might be a criminal defense attorney, but like you get training on what 
certain signs of certain things that your information your client gives you, um, how that might relate to a family court issue. And so like you might get to seek some advice from uh, a peer. Um, it's very like hands-on and everyone talks to each other. And I think I found that to be, I thought it going in and then it was confirmed um, once I got there. As far as the kind of work I did, uh, it varied from research, um, su attending suppression hearings. Um, after doing the research based off of that, I had two mentors, which was really helpful. Um, one from CDP, criminal defense practice, and the other um, was in the integrated practice. So she did some family law stuff and criminal defense. And then I had several opportunities to speak on the record, both virtually and in person, um, which was really like probably, it was very terrifying, but very fulfilling. And I'm glad I did it. And now I know I want to keep doing it. Um, I just need to practice. Um, and then Overall, I just enjoyed my time there. I liked the work that I did and it did meet my expectations. Um, what I think is great about Spera is that, I mean, we're probably not gonna get paid much in the field that we're interested in. And to go into a summer, not um, having to be so worried about like finance made me, made me I think, enjoy my experience a lot more. Um, besides that, just my peers, having people to have conversations with about like, hey, this is happening at um, this place that I work at, or this might be a place that I may not work for the summer, but they might've worked for the summer and I might wanna do an externship with them during the spring or fall. And so just the communication among the fellows um, has been great. Uh, great. Thank you so much. Um, so there's one more. Um, Ariane is coming, but she can't be here for the next few minutes. But I also thought I know some of the fellows have to leave early. So maybe before, if there's any questions for Danielle or I, we can, we'll be on a little longer. So, but do people have questions for any of the fellows, um, like either generally um, about the process or um, more specifically about an organization? I know it's a big audience, but to be asking, but it's totally, totally fine. Please feel free. Um, yep, Ian. Yeah, I just had a general question for all of the people doing their internships um, during your first like 1L year. Um, what was the biggest difference that you learned going into your first work in the field and what you expected it to be? Like, if that makes sense, like what was the biggest shock? Okay, this is what a, being a lawyer is like. Oh, no, that's, that totally makes sense. It's just, you cut out for a second. So yeah, he was basically asking like what um, was sort of, I guess, surprising or, you know, talking to you about your first um, internship or placement, which would be, yeah, the summer after first year. Um, anyone want to take a shot? I mean, I'll do mine, which was like a very long time ago, but it was that something that I still don't think legal education does enough of. Um, but uh, is just how many things you do that are not courtroom related, even in fields like Octavia saying public defense that is very, uh, that is, you know, litigation based in a sense, although of course we know most cases plead, you know, since you're not always doing trials, but even in, even in areas like that, there's so much like of counseling and thinking about, you know, collateral consequences and researching and stuff that that to me, uh, was surprising, like in a good way, um, but also about like so many things that keep it interesting, but also, um, yeah, was surprising. So now someone else can answer who's closer to the experience. Um, well, one thing that I noticed, and I think this is specific to being in front of family court, but I think in, in 1L, you read all these opinions from uh, the Supreme Court and appellate courts, and there's all this formality and things feel so organized. But that's not really the case all the time. A lot of it, you are going in, and especially at a trial level, and something like family court, you're just going in and making those arguments directly to the judge. It might not have that same formalness to it. And um, I think that, you know, there are the formal steps to be taken, but I think also being able to see kind of what does that direct advocacy look like that might not be reliant on uh, filing formats at least to the judge was really great to be able to see in person in-person on Zoom to be, I guess, more accurate. <laughs> yeah, I mean, actually to that point, I was in family court and a judge once said, I mean, this was two decades ago, so, or almost, so I hope 
that's not the case anymore, but that um, that they don't follow the Constitution and family court because they follow the Family Court Act. So but I do think Wilson's point about like there's very even in the court setting, there's very many different uh, culture cultures of uh, does anyone else want to weigh in and then or we also have a question from um, Arnie. Hi, I was wondering how difficult it is to apply for this as a 1L because like you probably don't have that much legal experience. Thank you. Yeah, great question. Well, definitely people, like I said, come in at different stages, um, meaning like, but some people, you know, do, um, uh, do get it, like they're, do get it um, accepted the 1L um, year. And we're definitely understand that most people don't have legal experience. I mean, especially as a 1L, you're not even allowed to do clinics and externships. Um, although I put in a plug to do pro bono regardless of SPARE, because I think uh, it keeps you like engaged and interested in law school, but um, but we also you know are looking into people's experiences before law school, which is just around like social change or advocacy that isn't necessarily legal based. That's definitely very valid. And then just also like people's sort of desire and commitment. There's ranging. There's a range of experiences, right? Like some people have some significant experience. Some people have less. Um, and it's it's like a holistic sort of application process. But I think Danielle can also answer even more specifically, because she does more of the um, yeah, advising and then application process. Yeah, I would just like to add in that if it's a lot about how you present the experiences that you have and the thoughts that you have. And if you, and that's why I really would encourage you to come in and meet with someone in my office at public service, africlaw.edu, I feel like an infomercial, uh, but really we can really help you with your application and like coalesce all your ideas and experiences. So if it's something you feel like you might be struggling with, don't don't feel like you're bugging us or it's too much. It's like what we're here for. So send that email, make an appointment. You know, we're here for you. Thank you. Oh, and two more things I was just gonna add. Like, first of all, don't be discouraged. We do, um, or, you know, I'm not on the, um, but the application committee, which I'm, I'm not uh, usually on, but they do prioritize two L's because it's like their last um, shot. And there are other fellowships to apply from this summer. Um, but, um, and also, the application does ask what areas of law you're interested of public interest law you're interested in and maybe a few organizations definitely it does not have to be where you end up and it doesn't have to be like you're absolutely decided there's a real range like some people like maybe Octavia I think knew she wanted to be a public defender for a long time but um but some people you know really uh, are have a variety of different interests that might shift and that's totally fine I mean we want you to answer you know truthfully in something that you're interested in but it doesn't have to be people definitely have different levels of like knowing exactly what they want. And I don't know if that's really true, Octavia, just ever since I've known you. <laughs> but um, but again, there's other people who, you know, are very successful Sparrow fellows who were like, well, I might be interested in housing or I might be interested in immigration, right? So it doesn't have to be super specific, but we just definitely do want you, do want you to put some thought into filling out that uh, question of just that you've been interested in what areas you're interested in. It doesn't mean that you have to have experience in that area because some people just won't have for sure. Yeah, Octavia. Um, and if I could just speak to, um, I guess with experience, I had some experience coming in, but I got my first job um, just having a conversation and just going back to what Danielle said about just presenting yourself and presenting what you have um, is really important. I randomly just had a conversation with someone and then turns out like they were the hiring manager. Um, and I didn't know that until the end of the conversation. And so luckily that conversation went well. Um, and like, I think she just probably just focused on less so what was on my resume, but like whether, I feel like I find that people want to work with people that they like. And so if they like you, um, just as the person, I think um, can like, I, I wouldn't discredit that. Great. Um, we'll actually see that Ariani is here. So maybe um, uh, we'll hear from her. She's the last fellow who couldn't come until now. And then we'll hear from her and then um, add, have more questions if people have them. Hi. Sorry to put you on the spot as soon as you come. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Ariani. I'm a 2L. And last summer, I interned at the New York Legal Assistance Group with their domestic violence unit. I spent most of my summer doing intakes. Um, I was actually the only Spanish-speaking intern, so I received all, um, all of our Spanish-speaking clients. 
So that was very interesting to, I guess, up my uh, language skills a little bit more during the summer. I also did order protections, a couple of uncontested divorces, and something that I really liked about the New York Legal Assistance Group is that if I was interested in another area or another division at NILAG that I wasn't necessarily like doing my internship with, I could just contact that attorney. So I was also able to get a little bit of a little, um, I guess, look at like appeals as well and do some research for that. And then I also was able to like do translation work for mediation and sit in on mediation. So it was a little fun looking at different things besides domestic violence unit. But yeah, if anyone has any questions about that, uh, let me know. Um, great. So any more questions, um, like especially for the fellows, but also, um, you know, more generally about the application process or for Danielle or me? Well, like I said, definitely feel free to um, email any of us or any of us. I know um, like they're very, very busy, but I know they're also really committed to you know, the community public interest, both at SPARE and beyond. Um, and again, I just wanted to flag, um, you know, the SPARE program is great. There's also LISBY, um, Brooklyn Law Students for Public Interest, wonderful program that are, uh, you know, community that also has um, uh, summer fellowships. So again, there's lots of, um, other opportunities uh, for community and fellowship too. Um, so just try and find out as many, about as many as you can. Um, uh, okay, and then um, I just wanted to flag a little bit more about the program when I said earlier that it's more than just the stipend in the summer. I mean, obviously that's really important, but it's also, you know, like we said, a community. And so there's usually like six lunches a year. Um, uh, we actually had our first in-person one, so that was really exciting. I mean, it was a little awkward logistically, but it but it sort of worked. Um, and then we have um, speakers, usually the students organize around uh, an issue of interest to them. There's been all kinds uh, in the last few years, like some of the ones I remember around immigration, around um, uh, the conditions at, well, at the time it was the federal detention center, although obviously we know there's still terrible conditions continuing at Rikers. Um, around, you know, just a ton of different issues um, and then have an annual symposium um, that we haven't, we don't know the topic yet for this year, but it will be sometime in March. Um, and then, you know, that's open to the school, but it's also really great to um, hear from the speakers and so on at the lunches, but also help to plan them. So like if there's topics that are really interesting to a group of fellows or even just one fellow, then people um, really have the sort of freedom to organize that themselves. Um, any other questions? Okay, so please feel free to email people. I'm gonna stick around for a little bit, um, but don't feel pressure to um, at all. But, um, and thank you so much to all the um, fellows who came to speak and for all of you um, who are interested in the program and for um, taking the time to come. Hi. Also just if anyway, it's only for one summer, the stipend, some people ask that. Yeah, sorry, it's only for one summer. Although, like I said, luckily there's other sources of funding like Lisby and stuff. So we can we can work with people, well, particularly Danielle can work with people to get other sources. But yeah, the spare program is only for one summer, uh, which is again, why we prioritize second years because they only have one summer left, but like definitely lots of people apply and get in as first year. So definitely apply, absolutely. Oh, and the applications are due, um, they're up online now um, and they're due October 29th. So like there's quite a bit of time and I would definitely echo Danielle that it's really helpful to, um, you know, work with their office on it since, um, you know, she's seen so many applications. Um, and so just feel free to reach out to them. Um, but like I said, it's pretty straightforward. You'll see, but if you have any questions, please, um, please feel free to reach out to me as well. Thank you guys so much for coming. I know it's busy. It's a great turnout. Yeah, yeah, definitely. There's a lot of really interested students, I think. I mean, in my, I do have a very large criminal law class, but I know there's a number of people interested. I mean, it's, it's great. <laughs> yeah, really sorry to... again, I had to come in late. <laughs> oh my gosh, don't apologize. Uh, how's your semester going? Going good. I um, just ran for my internship because it ran late, so I was worried I wouldn't make it, but I'm happy I did. 
Oh, good. Where are you interning? Uh, I'm interning at uh, Rubenstein and Reinecke. Oh, someone has a hand up. Oh, oh hi, Ian. Yeah. Sorry, I just wanted oh, to know. I just wanted to know if some of those other um, public service or public interest um, avenues for internship. You mentioned Bliss Fee. Mm -hmm. um, like, what are the other ways of uh, getting internships for public interest? Yeah, so great question. Right. Um, and yeah, Danielle should probably answer it first, but I'm happy to weigh in after because she really knows. Um, and I just also wanted to be clear that the Sparrow, it's the, you know, the community and the stipend, but then you would still apply out to organizations like all the organizations that the fellows talked about. So you could do it with a Sparrow Fellowship, with a Blisby Fellowship, with other kinds of funding, but. So I honestly, uh, okay. the, the answer is like an hour long. And so we have a program just to answer that question on Tuesday. Uh, uh, oh, it's our public timing. service, like job search timeline program, which will go over all of that. It will go over where to find internships, all the different sources of funding outside of Sparrow. It'll literally walk you through what you should be doing month by month where you should be looking for money, everything. So I would recommend coming to that because otherwise I'd be answering your question for an hour. But the Blissman Fellowship, the application procedure is in, I, sometimes it's in January, sometimes it's, it depends. It changes from year to year, but a lot of times it's in January, I think. Okay, so you said that um, that uh, meeting was on Tuesday? Is that yeah, another Tuesday Zoom meeting? Yeah, Tuesday at lunch on Zoom, yeah. You're gonna be getting an email um, is going to be sent out. Um, through, it's on BLS Connect already. It's on our Canvas page. Um, it's also in our newsletter. But if you can't find that, an email is going to go out to all 1Ls on, I think, either, I think, Thursday um, with all the information. So. But, um, did Thank you get you. the newsletter, Ian? Because that's also a good place to check. Uh, uh, yes, I did get the of, newsletter. I know, okay, great. So look in there. But I know, I know people get a lot of emails, so it can be hard to keep track of stuff. But okay. I'll also try and remind our class. <laughs> Okay. Thank you so much. Any other questions or? Okay, well, thank you guys. Um, do you have another question, Arnie, or no? You're good? Okay. Cynthia, would you like me to send you the email I'm gonna send out to the 1Ls about our program? Sure, why don't I, why don't I, um, uh, send it to the faculty to maybe hopefully remind people. Yeah, okay, yeah, I, um, I'll send it to you right now. Okay, okay. thank you. Okay, bye. Thanks. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye.